Hello one, hello all, it is the gothiest ghost of them all, Caspa in the flesh. And it is time for a review of Sudan Archives, Natural Brown Prom Queen. Sudan Archives is a singer, songwriter, producer, violinist, and occasionally a, a rapper on here. Very good one, I might add. And... She is from the legendary label, Stone's Throw Records, which, if you didn't know, MF Doom is from. If you don't know who MF Doom is, check him out. Great catalog. Uh, and this is her second studio album. Now, unfortunately, well, let me just say this. Off the bat, Sudan has always been talented, in my eyes. I don't really see how you could deny that. It's just the first album really underwhelmed me. And reason being, I felt like there there were some dope tracks on there, but not enough to keep me engaged. It, it was just missing something. And I feel what has happened in this album, and opposed to the last album, was on this album, I'm being taken on a journey, and the last one, I was pretty much being taken on a detour. You know, it's like, I'm on this bus, and they're like, okay, here's the instrumentation, here's the vocals, here's the lyrics, but I felt like it just came off emotionally flat, I felt like there was really no direction here, where are we going, but on this one, the bus has just let me off, and now I'm on this journey, and I'm on this journey with Sudan, and she is just bringing me all different types of things, all different elements of genres, all different elements of sound, and it's just coming together like so beautifully. And I also feel like there is a ongoing theme here from love to romantic love, love for family, love for culture, love for herself and also other obstacles that have hindered her happiness a little but we will get into that and there's just so much emotion woven in here and speaking of woven in i love the background vocals here i feel like they create like this wall of sound and pretty much become like an instrument of their own and I just pick up on, like, different things every time I listen to this album. And if you're going into this, this definitely is an album that requires patience. It requires the ear of someone who enjoys instruments. It requires someone who cherishes songwriting and understands metaphors and all that, because she's not going to give you, like, how should I put this, something accessible at first. You're going to have to get into it and pretty much just take the ride and just let it all build. Let it all build, because when it builds, it hits. It definitely hits. And... No disrespect to Thames, no disrespect to Burna Boy, but I feel like they have ways to go in terms of the Afrobeat element that they're trying to go for because Sudan has nailed it here when it comes to that. I feel like I'm definitely getting more of a raw feel with her. I mean, yes, there is reverb here, there's some auto-tune there, but the instrumentation just feels like it's so full, 
so from the heart. I feel like there's definitely a more of a raw emotion here. And the songwriting has like so many layers. I feel like there's so much ch uh, texture with the production. And this is mostly an art pop album. I would land this in the art pop category, but some may label this as R&B, just like they've put FK Twigs in R&B or Beyonce's new album in R&B. But I feel like for those who have been labeled R&B, they are really going the distance lately. And it all kicked off with uh, FK Twigs with her Capra Songs mixtape, where she just did alternative R&B, but there was so many elements provided with that. Um, Beyonce, they label, label her R&B, but she's provided so many elements to the genre that I don't know if I could call it R&B. And I do feel there, there are influences here outside of the R&B genre. I mean, sure, you got your Janelle Monet influence, um, but I kind of hear Outkast at times. I hear Kanye at times. I even hear a little, a, a dash of Tame Impala, just a little bit. Um, but anyway, let's get into the track list, because I know that's what you guys want. You want the track list. Homemaker has these gorgeous disco style palettes with these bright touches of strings. And the hook is so heavy and rich. Like, it just creates a grand opening for the album. And the song is about yearning and inviting a love interest, you know, for affection, telling them you don't have to put on an act with me. You can be yourself, you can relax, and let me heal you. Because honestly, when you leave, and I'm going to need that healing too, and I need that healing while you're here. And there's also a very self-doubt thing going on here from her. Because, you know, she definitely needs healing as well. And... One thing I love about this album, too, is the narrative, definitely, and the, what's troubling her, kind of like Kendrick uh, with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, except a very less uh, traumatizing event, um leading to why he's been holding back and what he's been hiding. Um, but the message here becomes more and more clear as the album goes on. And Natural Brown Prom Queen, this track right here, it's such an adventure. Like, with its plucky folk loops, like, very simple, but very expressive as well um followed by these absolutely aggressive barrage of pounding drums continuous claps and speaking of claps it definitely claps back at people with these toxic colorist ideologies like she is just going at them full force here and i love how rustic the sound palettes are here and these catchy refrains leading into this mesmerizing passage of graceful harmonies that sound like a grand entrance to royalty, which basically complements the title, Natural Brown Prom Queen. Queen. Essence. Royalty. The regalness is definitely prominent here. And very enchanting. And then we go into uh, Sierra, which has these skittering beats, very lavish and harmonious, but assertive. Disclaimer, do not fuck around here. Don't be the individual here who betrays her and slanders her 
And now she has to get her family friends involved, and um, you've pretty much fucked up royally. And the booming bass here really sets the tone of that. Like, that shit's about to get real. Like, you're, you're about to get this very rude awakening. And the reverb violin lead at the end really caps off the song nicely. But she's not capping here. Selfish Soul has this bouncy beat, rumbling bass, followed by these very lovely violin arpeggios on here. These distant soaked harmonies, uh, soaked in reverb, I should say. And there's like a tribal meets Indies 2000s vibe going on here. That's what it's giving. Uh, where she is focused on self-love. And I feel like there's a double meaning here because she's talking about cutting off her hair, but maybe there's a layer here where the hair is a representation of someone she is invested in, but she feels like you're close to her, but she needs to let you go. That's basically what I got into it, especially if she says, like, extension of me, and you get it, you get it, you'll get it, you'll, you'll get it when it goes on, because I'm not going to spoil it for you, that's one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to spoil this album for you, you have to listen for yourself. Uh, Loyal has these grand, grand horns, woodwinds, and they coalesce so well here, creating this essence of dominance to the track and these trembling synth keys rumbling shots of bass and holy fuck like the hook here the hook just makes me feel like i'm transcending into this otherworldly kingdom in space and i just love how it transitions into like this absolute banger of a track oh my god Brit, where she really brings so much to psychedelic trap here that no one else has I dare someone to approach Psychedelic Trap the way she has because she absolutely leaves no crumbs here. And this is what happens when you take a sound and you add your own spin to it, which she definitely did. Also, I love the empowering lyrics here. Um, and unfortunately, there are some tracks here that I do feel have good things going for it. But some either just overstay their welcome, don't really build up, or I feel like Sudan doesn't really come through with the best vocal performance. Um, but that's just me. Flu, however, has these wondrous dense string harmonies with these twinkling keys. And I love the rhythmic breaks um, in the middle with these spotlight vocals. Like, it's great. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And Freakalizer is another banger um, with these urge of intimacy lyrics. Uh, crisp sounding beat. Sound like it came from the friggin' 80s. Um, breathy vocals. Entrancing synth arpeggios and nocturnal moody keys. Really giving you this futuristic type feel like i think what makes it great is you're getting nostalgia but it feels like it's now like this doesn't sound like it's trying to be a great song from the 80s this sounds like what it would be like if i was in the 80s listening to a track and a great song came of it. Makes sense, right? I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, Homesick is a very spacious, slow, and very sexual desire type track. And the horny level is over 9,000, but the sadness is kind of over 9,000 too. Uh, at least in terms of the tone, it's just very, very moody, very sexual, very passionate. Like, I love how the reverb on the vocals here really give it a very 
dreamy, cinematic, intense feel. And it's followed by Milky, by blah, Milk Me. And I love how graphic the lyrics are here. I love how hot and steamy it gets. But I feel like it just runs on that in opposed to actually adding more elements to it, adding more of a grander finish to it. Because I feel if you're going to do this, you know, why not build a climax? Because sex is supposed to have a climax. Uh, Yellow Brick Road has this 2000s hip-hop feel to it with this linear bass line, dusky, dusky, dusty piano keys, and just an eeriness to it. And it kind of sounds like 2000s Scarface or Common, something they would go off. And then we reach the final track where we've basically realized what she's been missing. And that's home. Like it all comes up to home. You Like all these keys and Easter eggs she's been dropping has been leading to home. And with the little subtleties going throughout, you get it. You get the narrative. On uh, 513. And she's just tired of the shallowness of Hollywood. She's tired of all that. And she just wants to go back to Cincinnati. That's where she wants to go. And I thought it was clever to do the biggie interpolation here. I'm going, going back, back to Cincinnati, Natty, you know, because going back, back to Cali, Cali. I'm old. But anyway, yeah, that is what that's from. And that was very cleverly played. So yeah, overall, I love this album. I will definitely be going back to it um, more and more times. Um, I've already listened to it a handful of times because I had to review it. And yeah, like the textures here, like I said before, great songwriting, great production. Um, some tracks do meander a bit. You know, there are some duds here. Well, not duds. I'm not going to say they're duds. They're just not as ironed out as I would have liked them to. But overall, great album. Very adventurous, very ambitious, very passionate, and I friggin' love it. I am going to give this the blackest of four hearts on this out of five. If you've given this a listen, what did you think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? Let me know in the comments. Sudan Archives. Natural Brown Prom Queen. Caspa, the gothic ghost, till we meet again.